Okay, I'm sure that most of you eat eggs, although I wouldn't say all of you. Now this topic is about eggs, but I'm gonna ask you first to please be courteous, please be respectful to those that eat eggs versus those that don't eat eggs. We all have our opinions. Okay, enough said. Here are six eggs. I wanna talk about the nutrition of the egg and talk about what it can do for our body first. There's only one main negative side to where people will talk bad about eggs, and that has to do with the cholesterol. And the issue here is, is cholesterol good for us or is it bad for us? Well, our body definitely needs cholesterol to stay healthy. Cholesterol aids in the production of sex hormones. It's the building block for human tissues. It assists in bile production in the liver. It helps your body make cell membranes, many hormones, as well as vitamin D. Well, one large egg contains about 80 calories. And we know that eggs can increase our metabolism. It helps stabilize blood sugar and insulin response. It suppresses the hunger hormone ghrelin, leaving you more satisfied throughout the day. Eggs are filled with most of the B vitamins, all the fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin A, D, E, and K. It has selenium, which is a cancer-fighting antioxidant. It has phosphorus, which aids in healthy bones and teeth. Calcium that keeps our bones strong as well. Zinc helping our immune system. And organic and pasteurized eggs are the healthiest eggs to eat. They contain the most omega-3s. And those omega-3s are an integral part of every cell membrane throughout the entire body. It affects the function of all the cell receptors in these membranes. It provides the starting point for making hormones that regulate blood clotting, contraction and relaxation of arterial walls, as well as reducing inflammation. And the two types of cholesterol are LDLs, the low-density lipoproteins, and HDLs, the high-density lipoproteins. And it's the low-density lipoproteins, the bad cholesterol, that leads to clogging of those arteries that can affect the heart that we call a heart attack or the brain that we call a stroke. And what's interesting about the egg is that the eggs can actually increase our HDLs, our high-density lipoproteins. And the high-density lipoproteins are the type of cholesterol that go out into the arteries and search for the LDLs, the low-density lipoproteins, and brings them back to the liver to be excreted. And eggs contain vitamin A, which is essential to eye health, as well as lutein and zeaxanthin, which are two nutrients that reduce the risk of macular degeneration and cataracts. And eggs are filled with choline, your brain and nervous system need it to regulate memory, mood, muscle control, and other functions. Choline also forms the membranes that surround your body's cells. And because eggs are one of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet, it will give you lots of satiety. That means you won't crave those sweets. You're not going to have those hunger hormones going out of control. It's going to allow you to control your appetite so you can lose weight as well. So as we look back at our eggs, why is it that some people can have one or two eggs and have high cholesterol and others can eat six, seven or eight eggs a day and have very low cholesterol? It basically means one thing. How well is your liver functioning? Remember, your liver produces 80 up to 85 percent of its cholesterol. We're only bringing in about 15 to 20 percent of its cholesterol. So. If you have a fatty liver, if you're eating lots of saturated fats, bad fats that is, if you're eating too much refined and processed foods, those excessive carbs get converted into excessive fats after they're stored as glycogen. And when your liver is sluggish, it doesn't have the capability to do its job full time. And to this day, there is no significant cut and dry scientific literature that can correlate dietary cholesterol into blood cholesterol. In English, that means what we take in on the outside has no direct correlation of what goes on on the inside. And if you have cardiovascular issues or issues in the arteries or past history of other conditions, your underlying condition would need to be evaluated properly with your physician. And please understand, I am not going against the American Medical Association or any type of pharmaceutical market when it comes down to treating our bodies with statin drugs for high cholesterol. This is just a conversation that many of us are going to learn from each other, particularly in the comments below. I promise you there will be many. But I'd like to share a little something regarding myself. 
I had eaten many eggs over several months and my cholesterol was extremely normal. And there's been times when I've edited very late at nights, all nights, all weeks, for a month, two months, and I would snack on healthy chips, organic chips, kale chips, sweet potato chips, healthy chips. Quote, there's no healthy chips because they turn into carbs. The bottom line is all those excessive carbs that I was taking in raised my glucose, raised my cholesterol, raised my triglycerides because of the excessive sugars. So I had no choice. I had to cut out those quote healthy chips that I was eating, all that excessive carbs, all that excessive glucose that was being pumped into my body. So I went back to my health eating, my fruits and vegetables, my whole grains, my grass fed chicken or beef or whatever it was, just eating healthy, natural, not processed. And my blood work turned out to be perfect. Remember we are what we eat and there's no other way around it. So getting back to our eggs, why is it that some people can eat one or two eggs and have high cholesterol and others can eat many, many and have even low cholesterol? It all goes back to how healthy your liver is and how healthy your body is and what you are eating on a daily basis. Remember exercise does so many wonderful things for us and helping to get that pump moving our blood circulation to help our joints. It increases our HDLs, the high density lipoproteins. Those HDLs is what gets rid of the LDLs that causes the placking in our arteries. The excess of sugars is what leads to inflammation in the arteries as a cholesterol and other types of products that come through that area, through those vessels, they start to stick, they start to plaque over time that can eventually start to build up and shunt off blood to wherever it's going to, the heart being a heart attack or the brain being a stroke. Remember, it's all about diminishing our inflammation. Me, my opinion, I believe that clogging of the arteries is not directly caused from cholesterol. It's caused from inflammation. And if we can reduce our inflammation, however, you need to do it by reducing your stress, reducing your cortisol levels, getting your sleep, doing what's necessary for your health, you're going to stay healthy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, no harm to anyone. Let's have peace, let's have love. Please leave your comments below, and most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.